Giving good feedback is so important to improve people's learning and performance, but the coaching research tells us that many of us may be doing it wrong. Let's take a pretty common example in kendo. Just before striking, your student has a tendency to turn her left foot out. Now, as a coach, we know that this can take a lot of power and speed out of the launch and can also impact on the posture and potential for follow-up attacks. More often than not, and I'm totally guilty of this myself, feedback that we give sounds something like, turn your left foot in so that it's parallel with your right foot, or turn your knee and hips in towards your opponent. According to the research though, this type of instruction places the focus on the internal elements of the skill. And when this happens, our student is now directing all of her attention to those complex factors like the placement of her foot and the angle of her ankle joint, rather than all the other movements that go into the strike. So basically, giving internally focused instruction can become a massive distraction. So instead, we need to paint a picture for our student to consider the whole skill. This makes a lot of sense when you think about how much there is going on before a strike. Focusing in on the smaller details will naturally distract from the environmental cues that the student needs to consider. And when you think about it, the ineffectiveness of internally focused instruction is obvious when the problem never seems to get better and we find ourselves giving the same feedback all the time. Right then, so what's the better way to give externally focused feedback? Well, luckily it's not that difficult to make a shift if we start using more descriptive analogies that emphasize the ideal distance, height, or speed of the desired movement. First of all, identify the problem. Now this could be a turned out left foot or too much tension in the shoulders. Next, we should try to use an analogy that avoids overly convoluted verbal instructions and emphasizes the outcome of the skill. Here's an example for the problem of the turned out left foot. For this next strike, think of having a couple of jetpacks strapped to your butt. As soon as you're ready, blast straight through the motodachi until you reach the wall. According to the research, this sort of instruction works well because it provides a clear action, i.e. the blasting off, and a clear direction and distance, i.e. moving straight through and reaching the wall. This means that the student can now focus on the outcome of the skill while being mindful that turning her left foot in will help with the blasting off bit. And the whole thing is framed with a novel image that even adults can respond well to. One more example. Consider the ever-present issue of too much tension in the arms and the shoulders. What do we do about the wood choppers in the club? Let me know how you tackle this one in the comments below. When we consider the type of feedback most commonly given, like you have too much tension in your shoulders or relax your arms, we're essentially placing the focus internally to the muscles and the joints concerned. We want to shift to an external focus where the emphasis is on the outcome. So for example, you could suggest that the left hand is like the engine in a car, and that's where all of the power comes from. And that the right hand is like the steering wheel, and its only job is to change the direction of the shinai. This is a great one that my sensei used with me when I was just starting out. Your instructions could emphasize words like swinging and striking softly, or stopping your hands in line with the face while trying to hit an imaginary opponent standing behind your motodachi. Softly becomes the action, and the distance and direction are covered by the imaginary opponent. To frame the ideal strike as an analogy, you might say, strike like a hawk gliding over the top of its prey. If you've got something better, which I'm sure you will, chuck it in the comments to help us all out with this one. In any case, these analogies might sound a bit silly, but they are an effective way to keep the focus on the desirable outcome, rather than all the distracting internal movements. These wee coaching moments do have the added benefit of providing tailored reminders for people that you can come back to when needed, and this can really help to build a trusting and positive learning environment. And it helps us to move away from the more generic and largely unhelpful instructions like more ki and good posture. Working on giving effective feedback is super important for your success as a coach. But if you really want to improve your coaching, you should definitely check out this video for more ideas.